Hello and welcome to my heavy metal kitchen. I haven't done a record review in a, quite a while, but there's one that I need to talk about that's really special. And that one is Ozzy Osbourne, No Rest for the Wicked. One of the things I like about this album is, and you hear it from the first one, is the production is so good and it's so smooth. There was a lot of anticipation for this album, which came out in September 28, 1988. I remember when this video premiered, it was really an exciting time to be a fan. And we get introduced to Zach Wilde, as well as a return um, from some former bandmates, including Bob Daisley. As much as I like Jakey e. Lee, I think that Zach Wilde's timing couldn't have been more perfect. He was, what, 19 years old? And I think this is some of his best work. I don't know how Ozzy kept it together, but um, there's some good stuff on this album. The whole thing, I think, is the whole, the whole album is good. It's one of those perfect tens. And I don't know why I haven't talked about it sooner. Track one, Miracle Man. I think you've seen the video. with Ozzy in the church. It's about Jimmy Swagger. He was the evangelist that had the prostitution ring. Yeah, he was not such a good guy. And Ozzy really, really, uh, that was quite a, quite a song. Great lyrics. Um, an example of Ozzy was a good lyricist. He could write something very short yet very effective. A devil with a crucifix, brimstone and fire. Love it. What great lyrics just perfect and it sounds just as fresh I think today song two devil's daughter another good one just when you think you had the first one going the second one is just as killer I love that riff and the pinch harmonics signature Zach wow I mean what is there to say but I think the most well it was, it's a little unsettling, but I think the most killer part of this song is when it kind of gets slow and you hear the baby crying and the cow going and then it just gets quiet, quiet, and then just rips into that killer Zach Wild solo. Perfect timing, I love that part. It's just, it's just super. Three, we have Crazy Babies. Geezer Butler here. And that was kind of a mystery when it came out because I think a lot of people were confused what that's, a, you know, what is that about? These self-indulgent children, these little kids that are going to end up, uh, as we see, ruling the world. Watch out for that. Breaking all the rules. That's another killer one. Bloodbath in Paradise. Now this one was my favorite track. It just it's just the way it starts you know something something big is coming and considering the subject matter that was a pretty uh pretty big event he's talking about the Manson killings and at the time I had no idea what he was talking about but uh, but it was it kind of shook me up you know even as a 15 year old kid 14 year old kid by the way I had my first beer um, listening to this album at a friend's house. Somehow, somehow we got the beer distributor to come to the house. I have no idea how they were able to sign for that, but those were the 80s. Yeah, so this album kind of brings back those memories for me. And we have Fire in the Sky. And that song, my God, I wish they would play that more than they do. Um, God knows I'd rather hear that than Mom, I'm Coming Home. Bob Daisley wrote that tune, and uh, it's just perfect, those lyrics. He was truly a gifted lyricist, and I don't think he gets enough, I don't think he gets enough uh, respect. I don't think most people really know, you know. Um, anyway, but I'm sure most fans know, but it's not something that was really publicized back then clean sounds it's just kind of a dreamy cozy song and just telling a story the introduction to his heartbreak began as a child it's no wonder he grew up to be so wild yeah 
um, it's a really cool tune. And like I said, I wish I could hear that more than my mom coming home. Tattoo Dancer. Now, there's a, like a riff in there that kind of sounds like Miracle Man. Um, I don't know. It, it's, I don't know if anyone else noticed it. Kind of this whole album has a, has a sound that kind of sounds like the others. Just, I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm just, just, a, just an observation. I, yeah, I like Tattoo Dancer. Another great track. Demon Alcohol. Ozzy is just talking to his addiction. That's the end of the album, but if you're lucky and you had the CD, the other two tracks I think are pretty cool, especially Hero. Um, I, I think that's a really cool tune, and um, it's a shame they, like I said, that another one that's a slower song that could have been played. I don't know why they held them like that, but... Anyway, this album kicks ass. It's just, prob I think it's one of Ozzy's best and his last good one. It just, it just seemed like this, this was it. And I just don't think it gets enough, I don't think it gets enough uh, play or respect. I don't hear people talking about it a lot. Yeah, I think it's special. So if you haven't heard No Rest for the Wicked, you should. 89, the best of the 80s. So on that note, I'm going to show you a video of my latest dish, Cabbage Bites. And I think they're pretty good. Hope you all have a great week and I'll see you next time on my Heavy Metal Kitchen. Take care.